All right. Okay. Good morning. Any more coming? No? How, how many of you should be in, in this class or in this group? Not sure. You cannot, you cannot see? You cannot see who are your friends? Okay. Um, so make sure you are in the right class, in the right group, because this, um, um, this subject got three groups. Okay. Um, so first thing first, I think uh, any of you not second semester, you're joining our odd semester? All second semester? Yes. Okay, that's good. Make things easier. All right. Okay. So, what subject is this? Physiology. Want to take? Don't want to take? Right. Um, so, I, I, I purposely put it up here so that you are clear what you are going to experience for the whole semester, what your journey is going to look like. Do, do we want to call it journey? Let's call it battle. Let's call it battle. Whether you can win or not, let's see. <coughs> battle against what? It's, it's not sort dual kind of battle. It's battle against your insufficiencies, insufficiencies in attention, insufficiencies in, um, you know, reading. Because at the beginning, especially the first and second year, it involves a lot of um, theory. It's, it's true, you got your practical. Um, have you taken your farm practical? Or are you taking this semester? No? No need, no need practical? Oh, you don't have to take now. Oh, you're horticulture, right? You're not uh, agriculture science. Is it different? Half a seat, half a seat, half a seat. Can you see those two? Maybe you want to go somewhere over here? Because the screen is over here. <clears throat> there is a reason why teachers, lecturers, forcing people to fill in the front row. Because there is a dilution effect. You see? The closer you are to the source of knowledge, the more concentrated of it going to be. What, what? Concentration of what? Concentration of your attention. Okay, <clears throat> um, I'm using this, um, the mic, uh, so that all of you can hear all the way to the back. Yeah. I think the, the management, they didn't change back the position of this um, chair and table. This was meant to be for the exam last semester. So how was your semester? Your first semester? Uh, why? What happened? <laughs> why? What happened to your first semester? Good? Not good? Disappointing? Disappointing in what sense? I, I don't have many classes dealing with horticulture students. Most of the time, I deal with um, uh, agriculture science. Yeah, so the the curriculum designed for you is actually different. Okay, let's let's put it bluntly. For agriculture science, it's meant to break them, like literally. You more into the pampering side. Do you have to slaughter a chicken? You have to do that. Yeah. So, so in terms of caloric consumption, 
they have to spend more calorie. Okay, more it's a bit more physical. Okay. Um, so what happened to your first semester? No, I wonder. Was it was it not what you expected? Was it too difficult? Who who thought it was difficult? Oh nobody. Why 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 am I asking this? <clears throat> the, the the reason is let, let's put it simply. It's very easy for my class, at least for my group, to get A. Like I have designed it in such a way so that everybody got it. If you don't if if you flunk it, something really not right with you. Okay? But for that to happen, you know, I need to have some um, information, prior information. What what was was what 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 is it like? So um why 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 do you think your first semester is a bit disappointing? You didn't work hard enough. Okay, so we need to go to gym more. Effort more. Why did you put more effort? Did you not have energy to do it? Why? Or was it not interesting? What, what, what did you take in your first semester? But you can, okay, that can be a bit daunting. Okay. What else? Isn't a burden something simple? But, oh, botany. I, 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 I taught botany group, but not your. Our faculty, I, I taught group six. Ah, okay. And then one is science, science, science. Okay, fundamental of science. So it's like four or five things. What about economy? You should take economy. Oh, good luck with that. <laughs> okay. Let's get you become interested again. You, you, you see, um, during your time now, it's all digital. To the point, virtual, even if you want to get engaged or married, it, it, you know, it's just in front of screen now. <laughs> Where is that person? Yeah, it can happen now, right? <clears throat> so, that actually, evolutionarily, it's not very appealing to our human senses. Let's establish that, all this digital thing. <laughs> it makes things easier, but it's not very appealing. To make things appealing, actually, when you learn something or when you do something, whether it's studying or working, it, it needs to invoke or using all of your senses. How many senses you got? What, what are those? Sleeping, eating. What, what, what are your senses? Sight. Sight. Hearing. Hearing. Taste. Taste. Okay. Depression. Depression. What? Depression. Pressure. Okay, pressure. Um, oh, yeah, that can be a sense as well. Touch, touch. Yeah, touch, smell, yeah. What else? Is it five? Why, why only count to four? What, 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 what are those? One, sight, smell. Touch, taste, what else? Hearing. It is, I forgot. My, my handwriting is so bad, even I cannot read mine. This is sight. Sight, smell, touch, taste, hearing. What about six cents? Do you have six cents? 
Do you think there is any sixth sense? Yes. Okay. So the little secret is to to master a lot of things is actually to to know you have a sixth sense. Okay. This sixth sense it can be it it well it actually has been defined scientifically. I know when we're talking about sixth sense, you're thinking about you can see through your friend's shirt. Not that kind of sixth sense. No, no, no. Um, I think that's how you they spell it. Proprioception. So proprioception is even if you close your eyes, you know in relative where are your limbs. Limbs are your hands and your legs. So that's why when somebody throw a doll at you, you can catch it even without looking at it. You know your friends can like to throw stuff at you, right? You can you can catch it, yeah. Or you can maneuver your your body correctly, so that you can dodge something or go into something. Those things are not under the senses in the traditional sense. So that is proprioception. So the reason I'm mentioning this proprioception is it's more about the quality of awareness. So proprioception, when it comes to your body, you know in relation where are your body is. Okay? You touch here, you touch there, you, you, you know where, where, where are your legs, where, where are your hands. Okay. If you if you still cannot grasp this, imagine if you close your eyes, if I ask you to touch your ankle, can you do it? Yes. Correctly. Yes. So that is proprioception. Okay? So what you need to know is proprioception can also be present in your mind. Okay. So when you learn something, the, 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 the quality of being aware is actually very valuable, okay? So once you have mastered this in a way, the interest, the inquisitive nature will come naturally. I'm not saying that all of you are going to be super interested in this subject. No, because you got different interests. Uh, well, let's face it. Most of you are taking this because this is mandatory. Okay, I'm teaching this because this is mandatory as well. Okay, I shouldn't be teaching this. Actually, why am I teaching this? That should go around the faculty. That's why. That's why. That's why. They like they like to petit petit me whenever there's an empty. Oh, uh, nobody want, cannot teach this. Go teach there. <laughs> that is fine because I'm a plant scientist. So within my capability to teach it, if suddenly I have to teach biochemistry, I can do that as well. All right. Okay. So let's look at. So you, you got what I mean, okay? So open your horizon because I can teach in so many ways. All right. It's not always linear. Okay. My, my approach can be a bit unusual, but that is all to awaken your senses, okay? To the point, you will cry. Yes. Crying is part of the waking up your senses, right? Okay? Anybody never cry? No, she never cried. <laughs> uh, was, uh... <laughs> okay. So let's look at uh, the things that you're going to experience. So um, three credit, two plus one. We got uh, two hour of lecture and one hour, actually not one hour, that one, one hour of practical equivalent to three hours of practical. <sighs> okay, this is actually in Malay. Uh, not to worry, uh, we will go through. So in essence, you need to learn about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine things you uh, during your theory or lessons, okay? 
I'm going to start with the growth analysis, which is today. Okay. Have you checked your Petra Blast? Why are you not checking your Petra Blast? Before we go further, so go to your Petra Blast. Um, the reason is, um, I don't, I don't have WhatsApp that kind of thing. Okay, I don't even know where my phone is. I just use whatever Windows have, and I, I won't go overboard with it. So Windows got Skype, so we use Skype. Okay, so go to Putra Blast. Two things: you need to join the Skype thing. You can download Skype into your phone, okay? Kind of like WhatsApp, but when it comes to video learning lessons, it's, it's, it's much better, okay? And all your notes will be on one drive cloud, which is Microsoft product as well. Again, I don't go beyond Microsoft, whatever within the computer. So your notes, can be on the go now. I know Putra Blast can be a bit daunting. You want to log in, you cannot, you cannot log in, but with OneDrive, you can have it on your phone, you can access all the notes. So whatever that we have here today, it's already on the OneDrive. So you can also download OneDrive into your desktop, okay? So let's say that you, you are finished with this semester or even finished with your degree, Whatever notes, whatever activities that you have done throughout the semester while with me, it's still there. Putra Blast, it's going, it's going to be gone. <coughs> UPM is not going to pay extra to keep your notes. What's this rubbish? Throw away. Okay, so the whole idea is so that you have all this material for as long as I got premium accounts. At least for the next five years, I still got premium accounts. Right? Okay. So please, uh, please join the, the, the Skype, okay? So I'll give the, the announcement on the Skype or somebody else will because I don't like to type. Okay, uh, I'm gonna start with the growth analysis which is this lesson here. That's already uh, on the Putra Blast and also the OneDrive. And then we're gonna see the, um, the germination of the seeds, okay? Oh, before 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 go further, I'll just go through what are objects so that you know what you're going to face for the rest of the semester. So growth analysis involves understanding the concept of growth, development, and the functioning of the plant as a general. How do you quantify the growth of the plants? Because in horticulture, agriculture, this is your product. Okay. It's not because you want to weigh yourself because you want to keep yourself slim. No, you want to quantify the growth because the organs of interest that you harvest, it can be leaf, it can be root tuber, it, or it can be flower quality. All of these are what we call as quantifiable. They, 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 they have some value so that you can measure from cycle to cycle or from harvest to harvest. Maybe there are things that you want to keep the practice. Maybe there are practice, you want to refine it so that your harvest can be of better yield and better quality. Why? Why do you need better yield and better quality? It's more profit. Agriculture is business. Yeah, remember that. <coughs> Why, why, why people do agriculture? Hobby? It's for sustenance. In the past, when there was no UPM, no, no building, cave people, agriculture kind of like the mother of all sciences. It starts with people who are hungry. You know, the caveman, huga huga, look very messy and stuff went out hunting and gathering. And one day they realized, oh, this is too, getting too far. And the wife is pregnant and cranky, cannot live for too long now. So they tried to understand the 
natural condition of the crop that is grown, which is far away, and then they imitate that near the residential place, near the cave that they're living. So that's when they start to learn the science of the crop, which needs water, which, is, which needs nutrient to thrive. And also the science of the soil, the science of the climate. See, all of these sciences came about because of the needs of agriculture. So that's why agriculture is said to be the mother of all sciences. Is that medicine? Medicine come later. Okay? Because you need to feed yourself many, many times in the day. That's why you are that size. Right? Okay. Right. Then we go on with the, uh, the germination of the seeds. Um, so what seeds are? There, there, there is a dedicated subject for seeds. It's called seed technology. If you take pro, with Pro of Umar, you can learn uh, more about, about seeds, okay? But here is just an introduction about um, the seeds germination and also the factors that influencing germination and also the uh, dormancy. Do you know dormancy? What's that? Are you dormant? Are you dormant? Yes. 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 <laughs> the, I, 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 really, I really suggest if you want to start to have a small book because writing trigger this to wake up as your glossary. You know, when I was a student, I have this kind of small book. Whenever, whenever you go to the class, you will start learning all these terminologies. Like now, today you learn about the proprioception. Okay? So have this um, scientific vocabulary added to your mind dictionary. Okay, you look, I'm teaching now. Am I using any book? How? How can, how can I teach you? How many minutes now? It's been like 20 minutes now. I've been talking nonstop. How can I do this without any script? So there must be something that I've done many, many years ago that have paved the way in a very con con coherent manner. Okay, all right. So, find reason to write. Okay, find reason to write. Um, if you are, if you are a Muslim, I think most of you are. Kau tak ada, kau tak bangis mayang pun. What, what, what was the first instruction from the God to the Prophet? Yes, read. And then God asked the Prophet to use what too. Ah, tak ingatlah surah tu kan? Ayat nombor lima. Apa benda? Apa? 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 Dia suruh baca, lepas tu dia suruh guna tools. Suruh apa? Haa. Ah. Apa buruknya? Alam, pen. Nampak tak? Why? To awaken your senses. Okay? Like, really awaken your senses. The reason is, when you are writing, when you are learning, listening, or reading, the, the written thing is already there. Why do you need to read again? Uh, write again? It's to solidify your neural connection. When you, you learn things for the first time, your neurons are firing like crazy to the point it's, it got so messy that's why you're crazy so to calm down these firing neurons and also to make sure that whatever hooks that these neurons have created connecting firmly and solidifying all the branching and connection repetition is needed so repetition is the key. And when you do the repetition while invoking some of the senses, 
it just validating with your own body. Even though I'm using different senses now, it's still the same thing. So your body now, oh, this is, this is really the serious thing. So commit to the long-term memory. So that's, that's the important, okay? Did you learn this before? Yeah, yeah. So um, it's good to know because it's not only for this subject, but for other subjects as well, right? Okay. Then what else? Photosynthesis. Ah. Can I just give you a TED video to watch and learn photosynthesis? Sure, sure. And then you'll have an online degree. Right. So, I'm, like I said, I'm a plant scientist, right? As also, photosynthesis is my specialty. Right? So, um, anything to do with photosynthesis. So, so it, I need to control myself not to go too deep with, with, with photosynthesis. Why, why is it important for your horticulture, agriculture uh, business? Why? Why photosynthesis is important? This is the thing that is manufacturing your harvest. This is the very factory that manufacturing your, your harvest. You know, you've got like Vitagen factory and all kind of factory. If you go to the supermarket, you see all the Vitagen, Ribena, Maggi, Milo. Do you think the supermarket produce at the back? It came from somewhere. So that somewhere is the production line, the manufacturing line. So photosynthesis in all plant species, I mean like agricultural, horticultural species, photosynthesis is the key to everything. Producing all these organs, not only for the starch and sugar, but also for all the pharmaceutically important nutrients, the vitamins, active ingredient, you know, some, some herbs like, um, let's get one herb. Tonka Ali, Kachi Fatima, that kind of stuff. Those active ingredients that make these herbs popular are not starch or sugar. They are compounds, phy phy uh, polyphenol compound, phytochemical compounds. But these phytochemical compounds all are actually originated from photosynthesis. Photosynthesis need to happen first to create the precursor before this active ingredient can be created. Okay, so you can see why this is important. Yeah, not, not all products of agriculture is high carbohydrate, you know, like rice, bread, that kind of stuff. No, not all carbohydrate. You, you still need vitamins, you know, minerals, antioxidants, uh, polyphenol compounds, and, and stuff. And these, even though they are not produced directly from the reactions of photosynthesis, but still, without photosynthesis, none of this would have happened. Okay? So it's very important. Then we see number four, which is the um, connection between water and the plant. The importance of water, the potential of water. Okay, I think we're going to learn about the water potential. Okay? Do you have potential? No? What, what is meant by potential? Like ability. Ability? Disability. My ability is to sleep under two seconds. Just gone. Is that a potential? It's true. Potential in a way is the ability. Ability to do work. That's, that's the fundamental definition of it. Ability to do work. In the case of this water potential, the the potential of the water to move from the region of higher concentration to a lower concentration. The water itself, okay? The water comes in the form of molecules, okay? When you see a droplet of water, 
that droplet of water comprising so many molecules. Not just one molecule of water. You see, oh, let's look under microscope. Let's see the H2O. It's not going to react, H2O. So many what, uh, molecules. So these molecules, the more they are present in a given volume, we call that system of higher potential. It's so filled with the same, same molecules of the same kind. So when you have a neighboring system, which has less of this molecule, in this case water, there is a difference in concentration gradient. So the gradient with the high water molecule concentration will follow the nature's law, go to the area of lower concentration. So that's the, actually the concept of water potential, which is important in plant because Do you have blood in your body, right? How the blood in your body move? Diffusion. Diffusion. <laughs> How it travels from, from your brain to your leg? That's the conduit, the channel. How it travel? Water. The blood contains water. How, 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 how it travel? What, what, what enables it to travel? Uh, Pumping. Who does the pumping? Okay. Does the plant have heart? Plants. Plants. Do they have heart? Or they are heartbroken? No, got no heart. Plants. Are they heart? No? So, plants got no heart. How they circulate the water around the body? Ah. Uh, from the leaf back to the root, from the root back to the leaf. So one of the ways is through the action of water potential. Okay, the bulk flow of it, a combination of small, small things. Okay, all right. Oops, and what else? Uh, number five, let's go. Uh, the climate change and crop growth, uh, the effect of climate, we're going to see the effect. Um, I think this would be your special case study. Number five, changing from semester to semester. I need to check with other groups because your um, final is centralized. So we, we need to have the common ground of the special case like this. Okay. And then the translocation, which you're going to learn after your plants have manufactured all the sugar, starch and stuff. How is it translocated to, this, to the destination? The concept of sink, uh, oh no, source and sink. Source, manufacturing line. Sink is the supermarket destination, how, how it arrives. Okay. And then number eight is the um, growth regulator, hormones. Yeah. Learning about hormones. And also, and finally, about the uh, reproduction of the plants uh, involving flowering, ripening, and also vernalization. Do you know vernalization? V -v 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 vernalization. I use S because I'm British. If you are American, use that. Vernalization. Um, you want to tell people what vernalization is? Shouldn't you know? These two are my students under rehab program because they are so stubborn, they have to, to, to re-attend the physio class again. Yeah, so they, they are no better than you. Everybody is learning. So what's vernalization? What's that? Cold treatment. If I put you in the freezer, so did I just vernalize you? Did I just vernalize you or did I just kill you? Do you call vernalizing or killing? When I put you in the freezer, because you say uh, cold treatment. Ah. In essence, vernalization is giving the cold treatment to a plant organ. But the definition doesn't end there. To trigger 
developmental phase of a plant. You know tulip? Tulip? Tulip flower? You know, very very popular in Holland, Netherlands. So tulip is a bulb, like, like onion. If the tulip didn't experience the previous year, the coldness, and then it just continued to grow until the next summer, the, the bulb is going to grow and sprouting, but the, it will only produce leaves, no flowering. Okay, but the bulbs that experienced cold and harsh weathering, in a, which is the vernalization, the cold treatment, it will produce flower. So vernalization is the cold treatment to trigger floral initiation or floral induction. Okay, so that the plant can bloom. If the plant don't bloom, how are they going to reproduce? All right, so very, very common for temperate crops. Do you understand temperate when I say temperate? Not temperature. Temperate. In short words, it's a four season country. Are we temperate? No. What are we? Uh, we are hungry. <laughs> what? That that is longitude line. We are tropical or evergreen. Thailand monsoon tropical. What's the difference between the our kind of evergreen tropical and monsoon tropical? For monsoon tropical at Thailand, there is a in a few months distinct dry period, drought. That's why they can grow haromanis. Without dry spell, dry period, the mango cannot accumulate all the sugar in the body. Okay? Try, try to grow haromanis in Seremban. Will it happen? <laughs> it's a waste of five years. That's, that's, that's not going to happen. Yeah, because, uh, yeah, that's, that's monsoon um, tropical. Okay? Yeah. Okay, so that's about vernalization. So vernalization, you give the cold treatment so that the floral induction, floral initiation can happen for the flower to bloom. Okay, when the time comes during the spring. Okay, and these are your um, practicals. Can you do me a favor when you go back, when you have nothing better to do? Check the calendar for the rest of the semester. If there are Mondays and Wednesday holiday, let me know next week. Monday or Wednesday. I want to know when are holiday because I don't want to check the calendar. I don't want to read unnecessarily because I can plan your lessons. Okay, all right. Okay, so these are all going to be re-mentioned again during the lab. I think uh, the lab assistant is going to print this and give you for the one whole semester. Okay, so whatever that you are doing during practical for this group is going to be the same with other groups as well. Right. Okay, and then finally is the um, coursework and also the final wrong mouse. You stay there. Yeah. There maybe I don't know whether they are going to do this or not. They're going to change this into 70-30. 70% carry marks, 30% final. Because you flunk so bad <laughs> during your final. That's why. That's why. How are we going to help you? Okay. So more carry marks me, which is good. You 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 have many lifelines to help you, okay? Because for sure you're going to flunk and all these um, references uh, if you want to read, okay? Okay. Um. Oops. Any question up to this point? What, what time now? 
this is actually meant to be learned in two weeks time okay because the the second part of this um, lecture you kind of need it hands-on uh, practical because it involves oh bring your calculator you need to use calculator here oh did you know that you need to calculate a lot for this just a small bit just a small bit you need to calculate did you learn um, the log logarithm log did, did you learn it in school yeah you're going to use it again now Ooh. I, I i never could understand what my teacher was teaching like i i had to find a way to to create my own formula in my head it worked it worked so um okay so the first lesson it's about the crop growth analysis we're going to have the introduction first and then we go for the crop growth analysis i think for the crop growth analysis um i'll have the short lecture first during the practical okay because uh, you need to do the experiment to get the data because this involves mathematics okay anybody enjoy mathematics so much why one one problem well when people do not like mathematics because they don't regard mathematics as a tool you need to regard mathematics as a tool it's 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 not it's not your career it's not your life partner i'm just using you whenever i feel like it once i'm happy throw you again okay so let's see so what is crop or plant physiology first of all what's the difference between crop and plant is there any difference crop and plant i think if you if you have you taken your ent entomology this, this semester yeah i think maybe when you learn the anatomy of insects you're going to see the word crop again. But that's in a different context. I think crop in insects anatomy, it means gut. Um, you know gut? Gut. gut. I'm thinking what, what Azura said to me 15 years ago. There's a, a million word for that. Mm. I I I learned uh, um, BSP as well, but many many years ago, like what twenty years ago, long time ago. Um, there's a million word for that. Uh, what is that? Twenty years of memory doesn't want to come back to me. Kembolo. Kembolo. I think that's a word. You might want to check it out. My my Malay is not that great. On, on paper, written. Speaking, I've got no problem. I don't want. Tak nak beli. Who, who, who are you? Why you are suddenly here? Bas lambat. Why the rest boleh cepat? Kenapa? Bangun lambat. Tujuh empat lima. You wake up tujuh tiga puluh. Why? It's 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 already it's already nine, almost nine, ten to nine, almost. Time is very precious. Okay, don't don't. Like really, if you have to wait for the bus at six thirty, do it. One, 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 one thing, one thing about me when I was doing my degree. Full attendance. Despite I don't like some professors, and it happened that the professors, no student, didn't didn't like him, and it looked like 
I'm the only one with full marks. So he decided that semester to give marks for attendance. So I got five marks free. Who dapat A? Okay, the importance of showing up. Please, please don't be late. Like you just missed the important bit of this. Okay. Um, oh, the new record. So maybe you can watch again. Oh, record, kita record. Oh, dapat langsung aku cakap apa-apa repeat. I got, I got a YouTube uh, lesson list. Banyak lah. So that's because I'm, I'm, I also teach postgraduate and also PJJ. You know, PJJ, they don't have time to, to come to the lesson sometimes. So it's very important for them to, to watch. So you can go to the uh, YouTube um, list to, to watch all the lessons. Okay. Um, what was that? Oh yeah, crop and plant. What's the difference? Plant in Malay means tumbuhan. Crop in Malay tanaman. Tumbuhan dan tanaman. Apa beza? Plant all the organism under the planty kingdom. You know planty kingdom? You learn your botany right? The, the taxonomy hierarchy. You still remember taxonomy hierarchy? What's the highest hierarchy? Of the kingdom? Do you remember? Do you remember? Do you want to give them a formula to memorize that? Dia tak ingat dia sajalah kan? There is, I, I give you a small mnemonic formula to, to memorize this um, taxonomic hierarchy. Because, because there are some examiner in Viva, Master PhD, ask this and student can answer it by. Kenapa guna phylum? You are dealing with plant. That's for animal. So division and phylum interchangeable depending on what organism you're dealing with. If you're dealing with other than plant, we use phylum. For plant, we use division. Aha, uh -huh. lupa, lupa. Okay, is that correct? So that's the um, mnemonic for it. King David came over for great soup. Kingdom divi division. Buru bisa kau. Class, order, family, genus, species. Okay, tolong ingat sampai mati. Then after awaken again, still ingat. Right? You'll see that most of my formulas tak ada Melayu sangat for some reason because 90% of my plant science knowledge dia tak belajar sangat kat sini no I did learn and then I realized it was wrong so I had to correct a lot and learn uh, from, uh, from 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 England <laughs> yeah okay so plant is everything under the kingdom of plantae whether it's useful whether it's beneficial whether it's dangerous whether it's ugly, whether it's beautiful, doesn't matter. They are still plant. Crop, however, must be plant, but of benefits to human. And also cultivated to some extent in a large quantity for commercial production. Okay? So we can say that when you, you look at two plants, you have um, coconut and you have lalang, imperata cylindrica. Have you taken your wheat science? 
You know Lalang, right? Yeah, Lalang. The, the Latin for that is Imperata Cylindrica. So both are plants, but which, are, which one is crop? Why? Yeah, it, it got benefits. It, it's monoculture, you know, producing in, 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 in large amount. What about Lalang? Anybody got Taman Lalang? Your home? <laughs> that looks like a commercial production. <laughs> so Lalang is not, it's just a... Actually, it belongs to a new category now, weeds. Yeah, okay. So anything that of agriculture business importance, we call it crop, okay. So it, it really has to be in the correct perspective because at one time, the crop can be a weed. When you have a field of corn, suddenly you have a bunch of chili plants. These chili plants are no longer crop, but regarded as wheat, because it's interfering with the growth of the corn. I don't want you here, not here. Chili, I just buy from Tesco. I want corn now. Okay, so it's just a concept, okay? So look at the definition, crop physiology. So we use the word crop, okay? Because we want money. Anybody do not want money? Oh, nobody want. Yeah. Yeah. So let's learn how to make money with science knowledge. Okay. All right. So crop physiology is the study of physiology means the function, function in the living organism. So there is a human physiology that you have to go to the medic school. Insects physiology, animal physiology, fish physiology, plant physiology. So what, what in any study that's understanding two things, the process and also the functions of an organism that falls under the category of physiology. So what are processes and also functions? So let's see. So processes are natural events that occur in that particular species, okay? Uh, so in the case of plant, these are the processes are known to happen in plant. Can you photosynthesize? The process of photosynthesis, does it happen in you? Sure. The, the process of Respiration, does it happen in you? Yes. yes. Okay, so you, you have a common ground with plant only in certain processes only because you fall under the different kingdom. Okay, right. So these are the, th there are still many more. Okay, so but these are the common ones. Okay, photosynthesis, ion absorption, transformation, assimilation, germination, flowering, stomata opening, and so many more. Okay, there are like 400,000 plant species. How many species are human? Do you got species? What, what's the Latin name for human? Homo? Homo sapiens. Do you know any homo? No, your friend is not homo. That, I don't want that homo. <laughs> That's his life choice. <laughs> Let him be. We've got other type of humans, but extinct. Homo erectus. Homo nobilis. Okay. The Neanderthal. Ever heard of that? Neon, I do not know how to, um, there are tall. ancient human, cave, caveman, caveman, the one, the one that started fire, then running, uh, dancing around it. Okay, so these are all the processes. Um, so these kind of independent, inde independent events that happen in plants, not necessarily simultaneously, because when the plant just germinating, it's not, uh, flowering, right? So this event can happen at only certain part of the lifespan of a plant, but some happening throughout the process life of the plant, okay? 
So under the process, if you combine a few process together, you can create a special specific function. Okay. So function means the, the, the natural activity of um, cell, tissue, or organ. Okay. Let's take, for example, um, the sink and source that I mentioned just now. Okay. So for the plant to be able to manufacture in the photosynthesizing cells and then translocate the synthesized sugar to the root, for example, a number of processes is needed for this event or this function to happen. Sink and source is just one function. Okay, So you need the event of uh, photosynthesis, cellular respiration, um, ion transport, a combination of various processes to make this function to happen. Okay, So these processes and functions are pretty much governed by two things. We call it G by E factor. So G is the genotype or the genetic of the plant. And E is the environment. Okay. Even though the plants by default factory setting of it, it can do all this set of processes and function, it is still governed by these two. So genotype is the genetic makeup of the plant. What is the plant is capable to do? Okay. Imperata selenendrica, the lalang. Can it produce fruit? You, you want it? Oh, I'm so, I'll, I'll kill for durian right now. So you just give durian baja to your lalang. Durian, please. Can it produce durian? No. Why? Why cannot produce durian? Why your lalang cannot bear durian fruits? The genetic doesn't allow it. It just doesn't have the recipe to make the durian fruit. No matter how expensive the fertilizer that you give it to it. It just doesn't know. Okay? Even though the environment is correct. You've given everything. Lighting, watering, nutrient, love, all. Still no durian coming because lalang just cannot do it. And the second thing is the environment. Okay? So the environment can be correct, like this case. Lalang produce, trying to produce um, durian. But the gen when the genetic doesn't allow it, it's not going to happen. Sometimes the genetic allows it to happen. For example, um, you got a mango tree. You know, I have to think because usually I give agricultural crop. Because since you are horticulture, I need to give all this uh, flower, pomology, you know, oloriculture. Olori it's a good thing I'm a plant scientist, right? So, your mango tree, it has the ability to produce mango fruits. Correct. You hope your harmonies to produce the, the, the sweetest, numbing, sweet, sweetness kind of fruits ever. But you decide to grow it in Batu Pahat. No, no, no. What, 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 uh, flat just now? This week? On the news? Is it Batu Pahat? No. Is it Batu Pahat? Ah, yes, go, go. Uh. Come back to Batu Pahat. So you decide to grow your harmonies in Batu Pahat. That harmonies has the genotype to produce that this super sweet fruit. But does the environment allow it? No. Why? It needs a dry period. The dry spell. The monsoon tropical, the Thailand god. The distinct dry period. Which is a must to produce super sweet fruit. It's a must. It's a mandatory. All sweet fruits must undergo a period of dry period, dry spell, which in Perlis, in the northern region, since they are neighboring with the Thailand, they got this. During, um, I think around February until April, something like that. Very now, okay? 
unfortunately in Batu Pahat, well, it's an island now. Anybody from there? I'm not. I'm. 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 I'm not. I'm not uh, cursing your your place. I. I cannot think of other place right now. You blame Awani for the news. <laughs> okay. So you you got you got the picture now. For for anything to happen correctly, both needs to be present just nice. You have the capacity, the ability, the genotype of it, and the environment is correct. Then all these function and processes happen smoothly. You get what you want. Okay, hopefully. I don't know, some people, they grow everything and then uh, got stolen. Right. Uh, a humping monkey come at night. Right. Okay. And also, please understand the, I know you know this, but now regard plants as a human body. Imagine that tomato plant replaced with a human skeleton now. I should make a, a superimposed image, right? You know why I didn't do that? For some reason, this copy of PDF, I lost the original PowerPoint of it. When I try to convert this back to PowerPoint, it just doesn't want it say a broken file, broken file. Mm. So the lesson is don't recycle notes. Because the notes that you created two years ago, apparently it's broken last night. Okay, so look at the whole plan. You got this. Underground organs, above ground organs, the root system, and also the shoot system. So each of these underground and above ground system, the root system and the shoot system, they have the uh, respective organs. Okay, do you have organs? Okay, remember cells, a bunch of cells make tissue, a bunch of tissue make Organs come together, make a system. A system coming together, make organism. Okay, that's the sequence. Simple biology. Okay, so understand plants got organs as well. And organs for the plants not necessarily present at all time, especially the reproductive organ. Okay, you have your reproductive organ all the time. It's just not being used at the moment. But plant for the flowering, for the fruit to happen only at a certain period. Okay? So we have the, what we call as the vegetative organs and also the reproductive organ. Vegetative organ involved in the active growing. Organs like stem, leaves, what else? Roots. These are all actively growing and expanding. Okay? And when the time comes, it will start to produce the reproductive organs such as the flowers and fruits. Okay. Okay, terminology time. Growth, development, and differentiation. So what is meant by growth? Growth, number one, is um, it's irreversible, okay? So it involves the cell division and also the enlargement, okay? So for the agriculture, horticulture crop, this is important because some crop uh, got the determinate growth pattern and also indeterminate growth pattern. Like the um, tomato example here. We got the vine tomatoes and also the bush tomatoes. So you can see that some tomatoes, they can actually um, keep on growing. Even if you do the trimming, they just keep on growing because the growth is regarded as indeterminate. It, it's just, it just kind of like infinity. But some variety, even though it is, it is still tomato, it's got the determinate growth. Meaning that the moment you cut it, that's it for the branch. This branch will not go any further, but the other branch can still producing until, until it's done for, all right? Development, okay. Development is the change in phase. 
you develop from one shape to another shape. Like the fetus development. A fetus, it started out with what? As a what? As a gamete cells. Right, you've got a sperm and ovum. Fused together, you've got your zygote. And then your zygote will start dividing, multiplying. You've got your embryo. Your embryo looks like a leech, right? It gets bigger, it's bigger, bigger, you know, sucking out all the nutrients from the mom. And then the mom, uh, then it becomes the fetus. And the fetus get even bigger, even bigger, makes the mom look even more bigger. Now it becomes the baby. Yeah, the baby get bigger, bigger, and then get born. Yeah, and then this born baby, wow, 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 then gets developed further, become a kid. You know, the, the kindergarten kids. And then it develops, become a teenager. Teenager, develop bigger, become adolescent. Then become an adult. Then become an adult. Hopefully, it's not So that's, that's, the, that's the life sequence of it. In a way, kind of irreversible. Yeah? But we're talking about the, the, the physical um, development, okay? So, for the, in the case of the tomato here, you can see that it developed into a completely different shape altogether. For the growth, the shape can look similar, but in, it's bigger now. It's enlarged now. Like the tomato plant. Three weeks old, it looks like that. Ten weeks old, yeah, you look the same, only bigger now. You see, you can still identify it as a tomato plant, even though it is bigger now because it has grown. You won't call it as a coconut. It has still got the identity, but only larger now. But for the development, it's completely different. Yeah. Like um, your friend in school, we call, you call it Salim. But 10 years later, it becomes Sally. He, she, she, he developed into that kind. Is it irre irreversible? Mm. <laughs> okay. Can, is the question is, is Sally irreversible? Can can he she reverse? Can can by what? Taubat nasuha. <laughs> do you, do you, no, I mean like um, for for the male to female, I think it's harder to 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 reverse. There's there's also the other way around from female to male, but that kind of like is easier to 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 become original. Well, some of you don't know what's, what's going on with, with the discussion. Uh, we're talking about human nature now. Right. Um, no, I, I'm, I'm telling you this because um, in, in plants, you got hermaphrodite, like in papaya. Right. So, in, in, even in some, some animals, you got hermaphrodite. So, you will see that now, because your discussion is small in small groups, You'll see that scientists are arguing about this. Maybe if you follow the nature's occurrences, whatever happening to some of these fellow humans, maybe part of the natural selection. They, they're just born that way. They are hormonally geared towards that. Okay? Don't be surprised. Actually, there is a, the, the, the hermaphrodite human that actually present. Okay? Have you seen one? Not see that thing. See the you know you know the the, the person. <laughs> Usually this this uh they I, I think it will say that they don't have a long life because they're just hormonally imbalanced. Yeah. I do not know. Uh, maybe 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 I'm not a human biologist. Okay, and then differentiation. Uh, what's this in Malay? Process pembezaan. Let's finish in 15 minutes. 
So the process of differentiation. Differentiation is um, you have a cell. If these cells divide to become completely a new one, we, we call it division. This multiply, divide, give rise to another that looks similar, identical, we call it division. But this, if suddenly, without nobody touching it, it becomes this. Transformer, henshin. <laughs> that is differentiation. It transforms itself completely. Like Salim becomes Sally. That has undergone differentiation. Okay? So the good example for this is um, stomata. You know, the small pores on the leaf. So stomata, uh, oh, I've, booked, I've, I've brought my rotan. I should use this more now because it's got more physical class now. Okay. So this is the MFC stands for Marist Maristemoid Mother Cell. Sum sum, tulang, pada daun. So these cells start to have an asymmetric division. It gives division, but the second cell of different shape and size from the original one. It's not like one marker get similar marker, no. And then follow the, the green, green one. You can see that the green MMC, it will start to differentiate into something completely different. Okay, it becomes larger and then it divides itself and then it transforms the formation of it into a specialized gut cells. Two gut cells make one unit of stoma. Stoma, singular, stomata, plural. Right, okay? Right. Can it reverse? So, poor Sally. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. I, I think that's that's all for now because this thing actually should be done uh, during during lab. But um, just let's put it this way. You 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 have your access to your note. Please read ahead of time. Like force yourself to read. Remember what I, I told you just now about the concept of repetition. The the more times you try to commit something to your mind. It's not about uh, understanding just right away because this is your first time. It's about to make your neurons plastic. You know plastic? In English, now, now grammar lesson. When we say something plastic, it means it has the quality of malleable. Bertambah lah muka kau kerut bila aku cakap malibu. Plastic has the quality of being malleable. Maksudnya, uh, boleh dibentuk. Maksudnya, it is not fixed. It is not fixed. People keep saying that the older you get, the harder it is to learn. In a way, it's true. Beca because you didn't do anything about it anyway. You didn't ensure your brain, your neurons to become plastic along the way. With the right kind of activities, you can ensure your brain plasticity. That is a field of study, by the way, in neurology. Brain plasticity. The moment you get brain plasticity, you can learn at any age without feeling any hardness at all. Okay, that's that is one of the things I hope you can do is to read things repeatedly. Have the notes read first so that when is your lab? I forgot. Wednesday. Wednesday. Okay. So before you come on Wednesday. This, you have seen it, scan read one time. Just put a timer, okay. 15 minutes the night before, I just want to read this. Read it, scan read. Whether you understand or not, that's not the point. The point is, we want your brain 
tomorrow to have seen it for the second time, not for the first time. This practice promotes brain plasticity. You keep doing this for all of the things in your life, not just learning academic, everything. Even though you are old, you will feel like, oh, you, the form five you is more stupid. Do you want to be able to learn 20 years from now? Or do you want to have a rusty head? Which one, which one do you want? Uh, remember I told you that your generation now, it's, all, the, it, it's different. You, you, you need to somehow beat the computer or the virtual system. So for that, you need a higher amount of brain plasticity. Okay, so do it, all right? Okay, I think that's all for today. Um, we'll continue short lesson about the, about this, the girth, uh, the, not the girth, the growth curve on Wednesday. All right, okay, that's all. Any question? Happy? Not happy? Want to drop? You can drop, you know. You, want, you, you can go to other group. Go to Phoebe. <laughs> the other group got Phoebe. Okay. No? Okay. Trying, trying, trying to assist so that this semester is not that disappointing. Okay. okay. If, 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 if you don't have any questions, I think that's all for today. So I'll see you on Wednesday, okay? All right. Oops.